Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, we help members of the public get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. They get a choice. <laughs> Sit down with one of our regular dealers. They're going to try and tempt you with a cash offer on the table today. 20. If I don't think that's enough money, I'm going to advise you to gamble and go to auction in the hope that you will get a little bit more money there. Today, the show comes to you from Whitney in Oxfordshire. There's a great crowd of people here. They've been here since early this morning. They want to do business. They want the real deal. Our experts are up against it in the dealer's den as everyone wants to know how to make a little cash from their antiques and collectibles. Simon, geez, and has our amazing. first seller got a good tip for Simon? You bought in this sovereign and it's Mel. How did you end up owning this? Uh, it used to be my grandmother's. Um, it was passed down to my mother and uh, she told me a story of um, when my granddad worked at Claridge's in London as a doorman. Yeah. Um, the Queen of Spain gave it the coin as a tip to him. Really? And my granddad then had it mounted in the uh, pendant and gave it to me then as a uh, gift for their anniversary. Oh, what a lovely so, story. Yeah, it's lovely, yeah. So he was actually the doorman at Claridge's? Doorman at Claridge's, yeah. And what made you decide to bring it in and sell it today? It's just basically just sitting there in a box, not doing anything. I just thought we'd pop down and see if it's sort of worth anything, really. Right. So. Well, what we've got here, we've got a, a Victorian sovereign, which is 22 karat gold. Yep. And the mount that um, your grandfather had made for it is 9 karat gold. Your grandfather was quite clever, actually, because when he had the mount made, he hasn't destroyed the coin. No, yeah. So quite often you see these and they're soldered into a mount, which for a coin collector is the end of the value of the coin, as I it see, were. Yeah. What we've um, found out is we've weighed the mount and we know there's approximately eight grams of nine carat gold in the mount, plus the value of the coin. Okay. So I can be quite specific about its value. I know what it is, and I'm going to try and buy it for you for a bit less. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> well, well, let's get some money out. I would like to buy your sovereign today, and I would like to pay you 50, 100, 150, 200, 230 pounds. It's a good price, but I was looking for a little bit more. Everyone's looking oh, for yeah, a little bit more. Oh, yeah, always looking for a little bit more. Everyone always wants a little bit more. Well, one day someone's going to tell them, go, no, take 10 pounds off, that's too generous. <laughs> But it's not going to be today, is it? No, unfortunately, not for you. <laughs> not for me. Well, let's put another £20 down. That's £250 now. OK, yeah. Let's Thank see you know. what David thinks. Well, I've come in here now, and I can tell you the basic value of these items. The story is wonderful. Grandfather was uh, a porter or a doorman at Claridge. That's right, yeah. And the King of Spain said... The Queen, it was, sorry. The Queen of Spain, even better. Absolutely. <laughs> said, my man, there we are. A sovereign. Yeah. Great story. Great isn't it? story. Yeah. The scrap value, the coin is just under 200, and with the outer uh, gold, there's about 284 pounds. So okay. if we can do a deal, and thank you very much for carrying my bags, it's better done here. Okay, thanks, Dave. So I think I'm going to stick on my 250, okay. and I'm hoping you're going to say yes. I would like to take you up on your phone, Thank you very much, Steve, for Thank coming you. in today. Cheers. And I have to say, it's a great story, and I, I wonder how many doormen today get that sort of tip, because I shouldn't <laughs> think there's very many of them. No, not at all. All right, well, it's great meeting you. Thanks Thank for you coming much. in today. Cheers. Over to Brenda's table, and is it time for the ugly mugs ball? These have been through the wars a little bit, haven't they? Yes. But um, not your doing, because the way these have been repaired are very old repairs. Uh, yes. These are Chinese. Yes. Um, dated probably about 1780, that sort of period. Mm -hmm. And this one uh, has had a total replacement handle. Yes. This would have been a China handle, but it's metal and it's got some cane work on it. Some very good woven cane work on it but it's riveted all the way through. Um, it's got a few nibbles out of it. Yes. Yes. Some hungry mouse. Absolutely. <laughs> and this one here, um, I find it more appealing. It's a little bit of like, luster work to it. Um, and I don't know, it, it looks like the Chinese rose pattern to me, which is a much softer look to it uh, and more appealing. Now, 
Shall I put some money on the table? Oh, yes, please. OK, now you've got a smile on her face. They're, well, they're no good in the cupboard, are they? No, no. OK. Ten. Twenty. Thirty pounds. Absolutely not. No, I'm well, no, good. I'm glad, not. I'm glad you're um, saying you know, it with some authority there. I, mean, I yeah. don't think they're worth thousands, but no. I'm sure they must be worth more than that. OK. So, forty pounds. No. OK. Fifty pounds. No, I'm sorry. I, 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 I like them both. They're right. decorative and okay. I could put them out on display if okay. push came to shove. OK. Um, All right. Going to go one more, sixty pounds, and that's thirty pounds each. That's where I want to leave it. I want yes. to leave it at sixty pounds. Right. So, okay. Well, you'd that's like fair to go enough. to auction? Yes, please. Okay. I hope you get a lot of money for them. All right. Well, thanks very much. Lovely you know, to meet you. It's nice to meet you. So we head straight over to auction, where the mocks are about to come under the hammer of auctioneer John King. What do you do with them at home? Are they in a cupboard out of sight? Do you use them? Do you use them for decoration? No, they're on a high up shelf gathering of dust and okay. collecting spiders. OK, so dust and spiders, we don't care. We take it all in on Dickinson's real deal. There is a reserve of 80 quid. It mm -hmm. sounds realistic to me. I feel sure they should do better than that. They're coming up now. They're nice quality items all round. I'm bid £82 to start them. 84, 85 I've got. 85 pounds with me then on commission. At 85 pounds with me on commission. Are you all done at 85 pounds? 85 pounds in this occasion. Take away about eight pounds fifty. I make that about 76 quid. What's your first reaction? You turned down 60 from Brenda. Well, it's better than knocking them off the shelf and breaking them. OK. There they were on the shelf, dust and spiders. Better than knocking them off the shelf, Ethne says. £85 under the gavel, a real deal, 76 Satisfied? Yes, yes. I'm satisfied, though I did expect a little bit more, but that's uh, the real deal. Next up, James has got a pretty item. But will it tempt the cash out of his wallet? You brought along a little inkwell? Yes. Is this a family heirloom? Y yes, it was... Um passed on to me through the family yeah. so it's um, stayed with me for a, a while but with children it's an item that ah, I'm right. sure too, you too vulnerable yes yes, yes. Oh, yes how old are your children I've got four children oh my um, goodness ten seven three and two so the four opportunities for it to get broken exactly. almost daily exactly so what um, do you know what the date is offhand I'm assuming this is oh this is not supposed to come off just needs re-gluing doesn't it yes yeah. um, did you look the date up it's about 1900s, 19, I've been. Yeah, 19... 1904, I think it is. Yeah. 19, something like that. Um, made in Birmingham, this bit. Condition appears to be pretty good. Yeah. Try to keep it stored in the way. Yeah, yeah. Because the, the problem with these is they're pretty vulnerable to chips. Mm. Um, I think there is a bit of yeah, the green one. off there, yeah. Yeah. which is a shame. But it's not too bad, because it's not in a, an obvious place. Any idea what you want to get for it? Um, See what you see come what up I put with. on. Yeah. See what you come okay. up with. I'll put some money on the table. Um, I quite like it. It's a nice decorative thing. Um, I'd like to offer you twenty, forty, fifty pounds for it. Good start, James. Only a start. Yes. Oh hey. no. <laughs> <laughs> Can you go a bit higher? I'll take the ten away. Um, I'll go a little bit higher. I don't think I'm going to go a huge amount higher because of the the, the chip in it. So, £60. Pounds. Does that seem better? A little bit more? Where do you go? You said you like it. I do like it. I'm going to go a tiny bit more. I think 65 would be my limit. I'd like a bit more, so I prefer auction. I'm going to try the auction. Yeah. yeah OK. Well, thanks for bringing it along. Right. I hope you do well. Thank you very much. Um, thanks don't for your break time, it on James. the way. No, no, wrap it up. <laughs> wrap it up well. Yeah. So we head straight over to auction to see if John can reach his target price there. Now, I think an agreed uh, reserve or estimate was 50 to 80, but it's been reduced now to 30 to 40. 
I think because so. of the chip, they have reassessed it and thought it was worth a little bit less. £30 is the reserve. Let's see what we get up to in the room. I'll start the bidding on the Inkwell at £42. At £42 with me. £44 I have. £46 here. £48, £50 I have now. At £50 with me on commission. Against you all at £50 with me. Are you all done at £50? We've got £50 and we've got to take off some commission. £45 you're taking away. What's your first thoughts now? Um, the offer on the day was uh, better, wasn't it? On this occasion, the best deal was with James Lake. Good on you, James. Real deal. 65 quid, but you're going home with £45. Good day. Good day. Thank you very much. Gamble, take the chances. <laughs> That's the way it goes sometimes. Also coming up... I threw them in the fire when I was five. You didn't. I did. Are these the confessions of a pyromaniac on James's table? Find out after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from the market town of Whitney, just outside Oxford. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Over on Debbie's nice table is a familiar figure. Tell me, how did you come by him? What's the story? I did buy him at an auction about four or five years ago and um, got him for a reasonable price and I thought, well, it, it could be a little bit out of him one day, you know, so let's keep our fingers crossed. Well, what he is is a mid-19th century Staffordshire treacle glazed Toby. And there's no prizes for guessing why they're called treacle glazed, because they look as though they've exactly. been poured with it, treacle that's just it, been left to run It does down indeed, the body. yes. Yes, it does. He's called a snuff-taking Toby. Did you know that? It, no, I didn't, is he? Uh, yes, that's what he's doing with his hands. He's taking a little pinch of snuff. Ah, yes, yes, yes. No. What I will say is he's not a particularly rare Toby. Isn't he? But there is one thing that he has in his favour, and that's this hat. It's complete. It yes. hasn't been dropped. No. And very often, these are the first things that disappear. Get chipped and broken. Whilst I say that it's nice to have the hat, I'm afraid um, the coloured versions of the snuff takers tend to fetch more money because they are more desirable yeah. and gentlemen's wives don't consign them to the shed in the garden, they allow them into the house. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm going to do is put an offer on the table right. and I am absolutely certain that I know what its value is because you've brought something into the field in which I specialise and deal right. in. So I apologise in advance if you think I'm going to be mean, but here goes. Right. Ten. You look quite happy that I'm going to give you a bit more. All good heavens, yes. Twenty. Thirty pounds. And I am unusually confident with that offer. What about just a fiver and we'll have a deal? And he's got his hat, you see. He's got me what another fiver. I, I give you that. And I did sell that, rather, didn't I? Yes, you um, did indeed. I picked <laughs> up on that. Yeah. So if I put this fiver down... We will. ...you're a happy yes, man. Yes, OK, yes. we've got a deal, yeah, then. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks very Debbie. much, Thanks though. Very much. Thank you. Thank, lovely. Thank you. Now, with Simon in a spending mood, let's find out. Now, Betty, you've bought in this silver compact with mm -hmm. a very pretty enamelled portrait on the front. What can you tell me about this? Well, a neighbour gave it to me, and um, I took it, thanked her very much for it, but I don't know why she gave it to me, but she did. And uh, I've cherished it ever since. I keep it on show, but I never use it. But I thought with the, the picture on there, it was beautiful. It is very, very nice mm. quality. And was that quite some time ago that the Navy About gave it to you? About 40 years, I would say, now. Oh, so you, you had it in your possession for yes, quite some time? Yes, yes. Well, 35 to 40 years. Um, I think this probably originally started off life as a powder compact. Yes, yes. And if we open it up inside, um, we can see there's a, a wee little yes, hallmark there. That. What and is that, it? that says 800, and that means that it's a slightly lower grade silver than the silver mm -hmm. that we have in this country. Yes. But it's perfectly acceptable, and most people realise it's silver anyway. 
I would suggest this probably dates from about the beginning of the 20th century. Mm -hmm. So it's probably about 100 years old. Oh, that's old. I would mm. think so, maybe 1910, 1920, mm. but we're still not far off a 100 no. years with it. This would appeal to sort of several collectors because you have people that collect compacts mm -hmm. and so they would like it and also people that collect silver boxes would like it and enamel boxes mm. would like it. So it's a very nice thing. I really like it and I'd really like to buy it. So I'd like to make you a very good offer for it to try and tempt you to sell it to me today. Right, we'll try it. I'm going to try. <laughs> what will you do with the money, just out of interest? We've got twin grandchildren so we may put it share it with them, I think. We'd better make sure it's an even amount then. Yeah, oh we? yes, definitely. So no odd amounts here. <laughs> they it's won't say no for it anyway. <laughs> but I'd like to offer you for your compact 50, 100, 120, 140, 160 pounds. Do you think you could go a little bit more? I think someone's going to tell you to oh. make me go a bit more. Anyway. Well, well, I've come in, I've heard you say, could we have a little bit more? Well, I'm going more, to then. say we need quite a lot more. I think what we've got there is a superb piece of Swiss enamelling. Our independent value as an auction is, I think, are being modest. They are saying 150 to 250. I think that's £250 worth of anybody's money and it wouldn't surprise me if it brought another £50 or £100 more in an auction. I think that's something which will draw in some real class bidders at the auction. Right, thank you. I, I agree with what David said. I think it's a, a lovely item. There's £160 there. There's £210 there now. There's £230 there now. Yes. <laughs> I would like to make a small profit if I could buy it. Mm -hmm. But as David's coming back... Small I'm profit, going to put, good idea. I'll just take the lock. <laughs> well, I think at £250, it's as cheap as chips, I have to tell you. I think it's worth more than that. The auctioneer is like this waiting to get his hands on that. Mm -hmm. uh, we know our dealer's got to get a profit. I think that's a cracking lot. I agree. I'm going to say, give her £300, go home, and you've got yourself a bargain. There you are. Well, I actually think it's worth giving £300 just to get rid of David. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there's 200 We've got one, two, one, two, three, four, five, £300 for the enamel compact. Can we have a deal at £300? I think I will do then, yes. Thank you so much for bringing Thank it in. It's a lovely indeed. item. It's nice been a pleasure meeting you. As well. you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Now, this should be interesting watching. James likes his snuff boxes. Can he keep his cool or will he get carried away? And you brought along a little pair of shoes. Yes. Uh, let's have a look. These are. Snuff shoes, you know that, don't you? Yes. And what's the, what's the history of it? What's, is there a family story? Yes, uh, it belonged to my mother. I expect she inherited it through the family. Yeah. Um, I've inherited it, and it's just been sat on a shelf. Um, these ones with the pewter inlay are normally Dutch. I mean, they date from the 18th century. I like this because the handle, where you take the lid off, is made up of three little heads. Yes. And I'm wondering whether that's... Um, because they were often made as love tokens. So it could have been for his wife and his two children. Oh, right. That's interesting. Possible. Condition is worn. Um, a little bit more than that. OK, a little bit more than that. Um, I threw them in the fire when I was five. You didn't. I did. <laughs> On purpose? I don't remember that far back, I mean, well, did you think they were rescued. Did you think it was a useful bit of kindling? Or, <laughs> no, or you, I think it was, was um, it bad mischief. Just mischief. Well, I'm glad you got them out in time. Or did someone else get them I out? think somebody else got yeah. them out in time, yes. Well, had they been in there for any, many longer, probably the pewter would have yes. all melted out and they'd have been even blacker than they are now. Anyway, we'll get some money out. Right. You obviously have very low expectations as you tried to destroy it once. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's changed. Oh, right. OK, I'd like to offer you 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 and 20. No? No. You want more? Yes, please. OK. Well, we'll try again, then. 120. 140. 
160, 180, 200, 220, 240. It's difficult. Um, it's not as easy to say no. yes. <laughs> I'm saying no. Oh, are you? I think if you really love it, mm. like a woman with clothes and jewellery, yes. then you'll pay the price. Yes, you're, you're probably right. I think I'm getting to my to my upper limits. Right. So I'm going to go and in I've here. And I have got a figure in mind. You have, OK. Would 250 do it for you? Because that's a nice round sum. No. It wouldn't? No. Mm, all right, well, we'll try once more then. Um, 260. Is that your best offer? I think that I think I'm going to stop there. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, I'm going to take it to auction then. Okay. All right. Thanks well, very much. I hope you do really well. Thank you very much and, indeed. And good Thanks. Luck. Good luck. Thank you. Wow. 260 pounds is a lot of money to turn down. What does our dealer James think about it? I'm quite sad not to have bought this. It's a nice little thing. Um, I think I made a really good offer for it. So I'm sorry I didn't get it. Um, and I hope she does get a good price for it, but I'm not convinced. Is James's prediction correct? Let's go to auction and find out. When you brought this very small, slightly charred uh, snuff box along, did you think it was worth anything? Not at all, no. I was going to put it on a, an internet auction site. Do you know what I thought she was going to say? I thought you were going to say, I, I, put it on, I was going to put it on the fire again. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you sat down with James late, and James offered you £260. £260, I think, was a pretty good offer, because James is a very good buyer of this kind of thing. Nevertheless, because of its condition, the quality, the auctioneer, myself, the independent buyers, we all felt it might be worth a bit more, but it is a real gamble, and I think we pointed this out to you. Yes. What do you think about that advice now? Uh, hopefully it'll meet the reserve and a little bit more. Well, the reserve is 300 quid. Yes. Now, that's pushing it even higher. Yes. It might be a little bit ambitious, the 300, in the sale room, but I, I don't know. Are they here on the day, the buyers? We're about to find out. Give me 200 for it, somebody, please. 200 pounds I'm bid with me then, at 200 pounds I'm bid. 210 I have, 220, 230, 240, 250. 260 I have, 270. 270 pounds on the machine here, 280 anywhere. 280 it is now, at 280 pounds it is. 290 anywhere. It's close, 280. It's still under the reserve. At 280 pounds? Do you want it to go at 280? I'm getting the, the look from the auctioneer. You can say yes or no. No, no. pressure. No. No, sir. It's got to be 300 pounds. Well worth every penny. 280 pounds, I know. At 280 pounds, 290 anywhere. Then we're not quite enough. It got up to 280 pounds in the room, and it stopped there. The reserve was 300 pounds. I still think you've done the right thing. Yes. You've got something there, which is superb very good quality a professional dealer bid you 260 the room bid 280 because that is the real deal and you've decided to take it home i've got one piece of advice for you though madam mm -hmm. do not <laughs> put it on the fire okay i won't real deal was here in the room 280 pounds it didn't sell because the reserve was 300. well i'm guessing those shoes are going to get taken home a little more carefully than when they were brought into the dealer's den some uh... Coming up, has this old soldier had his day? Maybe heading towards the Royal Army Medical Corps. Find out after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Back in the dealer's den and is Brenda about to get in a right pickle over her next item? Okay. It's in its original box and this is a pickle fork. Okay. Um, this is just a little butter knife. Now, it's got a mark on the back, which we'll have a look at. And it's here, yeah. And it says sterling. Okay. Sterling means that basically it is silver, but it's usually made for um, the European market or the American market. If it was a hallmark piece, then it'd be worth a little bit more money. Okay. But it is what it is. It's a nice little thing. Yeah. So why are you selling it? Um, basically, we just inherited some uh, items from my great aunt's house. We've kept some things at a sentimental value, but yes. I, I have no use for a pickling fork, to be honest. At this no, time. I, I can understand <laughs> that. Not many people have use for a pickling fork these days. 
Right, I like it. It's in a little presentation box. It's it's very saleable. I will get some money out. Okay. See if I can tempt you. Okay, thank you. Ten? Twenty pounds. It's a little bit more than twenty. Twenty-five pounds. Mm. I think that's quite fair actually, twenty-five pounds. Really? I was thinking mm. maybe another ten pound on there would be alright. Another ten? Yeah. I know, I will. Just for auntie's sake, take that one back and put that one there. Thirty pounds. I'll take thirty pounds. Okay. Yeah, lovely. Thank, Thank you, Brenda. Matthew. Thank you. Across the dealer's den, James has been visited by the headless horseman and horse. So you brought along some uh, Britain's toys. Yes. Uh, in varying degrees of condition. Yes. So, uh, whose who's, who's are they? Uh, they used to be my dad's. They were your dad's, all yeah. right. I'm not a huge expert on, on Britons, mm -hmm. um, but they are all signed on the box by, by Britain, um, who were probably the, the most famous lead soldier makers, and they produced you know, thousands and thousands of them. Mm -hmm. Some of them are quite rare. I don't think that any of these are rare models. Um, I know that collectors are very fussy about condition on these things. So you've got a gypsy caravan. She's lost an arm somewhere in here. So maybe she was heading towards the Royal Army Medical maybe. Corps. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I think we also need the Royal Veterinary Corps as well yes. to put this horse together again. <laughs> so, Tina, did your dad play with them a lot? Um, yes, they did. Yeah. Um, and they were on display a lot too. He used to yeah. I was just wondering why, why there's so much damage. They used to be on display um, at only war unit. Uh, and the wall unit had tipped and that's fell over caused and the that's damage. caused the damage to the yeah. horse and the rest of it yeah well, it's yeah. a shame isn't it yeah it is why do you why do you want to sell them by the way um we have three boys yes um and they fight they fight over them though? no no because there's four of them it's it's not fair there's one no. left over no, so we said right. we'd sell them and they could have the money to, to buy, buy something else something yeah. They yeah. Like. <laughs> uh, i'm going to offer you 20 40 50 pounds. No. You're very sure about that. Definitely. You? That's good. That's good. I like yeah. I like certainty. Yeah. So I'll put the 10 away. <laughs> um, so if I made it 60, 80, that's kind of 20 pounds a, a piece, isn't it? Yeah. No. No, we're looking for more. Looking for more than that? Yeah. yeah. All right. I'll try one more and then I'm going to come to the end because I. I really don't know enough about them. No, that's fine. Right, and, okay. um, uh, and I suspect that auction might be the best place, but I'll try yeah. and tempt you. OK. All right. £90. Pounds. No. Uh, unfortunately, no. not. No. No. OK. I don't want to give any more mm -hmm. because I'm not sure and they're damaged. So you'll try auction? I will yes. do, yeah. OK. Thank you very much for bringing Thank them. You. All right, thank and you. And I hope much. you do really well at auction. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thanks. The toys have taken quite a knock. Atina and Darren taking a big risk. They can't make it to auction, so David's looking after things for them. Turn down £90, there is a reserve of £180. Is that being optimistic? Well, let's find out. They're coming up now. Start the bidding here at 150. 150 I'm bid for them. 160 I'm bid. 170 here. At 170, 180, 190. 190 on the internet. We're at the reserve. 200 now, 210, 220. At 220 pounds I'm bid, 230. At 230 pounds in the room. Are you all done at 230 pounds? Gavin has gone down at 230 pounds. 23 pounds to take off that. Makes that 207 pounds. And that we're going to send on to Tina. Tina, 207 pounds, that's the real deal. Coming your way, you'll be pleased. Let's head back to the dealer's den. Simon's got mixed feelings about his next item. What can you tell me about your black clock? All I can tell you that I inherited it from my grandparents and it's been in the family as long as I can remember. I can remember seeing it as a small child in the church cottage where my mother's mother's mother lived. Wow, so your great grandmother. Great grandmother. Great grandmother. Yes. Well, what we've got here is what, when I first started in the trade many, many years ago, we used to call marble clocks. Nowadays, they're sort of called slate clocks, because in fact they are slate, not yeah. marble. Um, they were made in France, um, 
manufactured in the, literally in the hundreds of thousands of them during Victorian times. And um, they were retailed all over this country by different clockmakers. Sometimes they've got an English name on, sometimes they haven't. Yeah. Very, very common clocks. I used to go to Scotland and there was quite a lot of these in Scotland. And a friend of mine used to buy them. I said, why are you buying all these marble clocks? And what they used to do was take the movements out and the fishermen used to use them as weights, almost like an anchor, because they were so heavy and they used to use them because they were cheaper yeah. than buying anchors. This isn't a bad example, this one. It's got a nice serpentine front and it's got a bit more going on than some of them have with these sort of like three domes on the top. And um, you've got a nice enamel dial there. I think during the sort of maybe about 10, 15 years ago, they did start going up in value a bit and I think the Americans were buying them. I mean, they're terrific value for money. Yeah. Because when you think of, you've got a clock here that's 100 years old, a decorative mantle clock, and you describe it, you think, you know, lovely Corinthian columns and things. Yeah. You think it ought to be worth a bit of money, but unfortunately, as I'm about to illustrate, they're not terribly valuable. And I struggle really hard to sell them as well. So it's, I'm just the bearer of awfully bad news yeah. today, aren't I? I'm not doing very well at all. 20, 40 pounds. Not very impressed. You're not very impressed. I'm not. I'm sorry. I can't impress you more with it. It's just I've got a bit of a thing about these clocks. I just don't like them. I've got to be honest, and, and I really struggle to sell them. And apart from anything else, they're really heavy. Yeah. And they're quite difficult to sort of move around. So they're not, you know, something that you really want to take up that much space with, if you know what I mean. Forty pounds. <clears throat> Can you go another twenty? I won't go another penny. Couldn't go any money at all. I really don't want to give any more for it because I know that. I think if you take it to auction, I think you only need like somebody who wants this at home and it might even do a little bit better. So yeah. maybe you should try your luck in auction, Kevin. You definitely can't go anymore. No. You're not going to sell it to me, are you? <laughs> You're thinking about it, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll stand by my offer, but I do think you might do better at auction, so this is really your decision now. That, that implies time off and uh, I'll probably take it then. Oh, God. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming in today. It's, I wish I could say it's been a pleasure doing business with you, but I can't. <laughs> OK, thanks, Simon. This just goes to show you that sometimes when you make an offer, people say yes when you'd rather they say no. And now I'm the proud owner of a French slate clock. Any offers, anyone? Coming up after the break... It's a galaxy of stars. There is a galaxy of stars. It's a brilliant way of putting it. But will Deborah's offer have star quality? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Whitney and Oxfordshire, where people have been flooding in to find out if their treasures are bankable. Now for our final item of the day, and the stars of stage and screen are gracing Debbie's table. You brought two autograph books with you. Yes. Before I open them up and we talk about them, because I have had a bit of a sneaky preview, Tell me how they came to be in your possession. Um, I used to work in recycling and um, I just stumbled across them, I asked my boss if I could take them and he said, yeah, of course, um, so they would have been in landfill. No! So I rescued them. How amazing. So somebody, we don't know who, had thrown them away. Yeah. And luckily you happened to um, have a, an eagle eye that day mm -hmm. and you um, saw them and, and salvaged them because yeah. otherwise they'd be buried underground. Mm. Well, let's have a quick look at them. This one here has clearly been um, at some point somebody who comes from a local address. I'm not from this area, so where, where's this? Yeah, it's uh, Wolvercut, which is just outside Oxford. It's a beautiful little village. Little village. And I can see, if I turn over the front cover, that it's been um, inscribed to Joan um, from her mum and dad in 1935, so it's pre-war, mm. which is amazing. Now. Without going through each one, bit by bit by bit, they are both jam-packed full of amazingly famous names, aren't they? It's a they? galaxy of stars. There is a galaxy of stars. It's a brilliant way of putting it. Who's that? Vivian Lee. Vivian Lee. The great. The great Vivian Lee. Gracie Fields. Yeah. And, and... Max Miller. Yeah, he's not as good as Vivian Lee. <laughs> From a man's point of view. And this other book is again dated uh, 1934, 
And my absolute favourite signature in here has got to be Lawrence Olivier. Yeah, became the husband of Vivian Lee. So. <laughs> and you, you probably met in between times, oh, you think? Yeah, definitely. But, now, if I do make you an offer, do you know what you might do with the money? Um, holiday. 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 Well, I hope the offer is generous enough. Let's let's give it a go. Hopefully not Butlins. <laughs> Hopefully not Butlins. Butlins, here we come. Yeah. Fifty. A mm -hmm. hundred pounds. That's fifty pounds for each of the books. Okay. Now, bearing in mind you paid absolutely nothing for them. I think that's a pretty good offer. Mm. You don't look very convinced. No. Um, you can have Max Miller for that. <laughs> Richard, it's, these are sometimes a difficult thing to, to yeah. value, but there is one or two interesting ones. You've got our Gracie in there, you've got Gracie Fields. You've also got Fairbanks Jr. That's an interesting one. I think Vivian Lee and um, Sir Lawrence Olivier, I think they're fairly common. Two to three hundred pounds is what our independent valuers say. I'm going to say for an autograph book, I think that's a little bit on the heavy side, the two to three. I would have said somewhere like 150 to 250. I think it's worth a little bit more than that, but I'm not sure exactly how much. So, Richard, that is going to be my last offer. £100 okay. is on the table for me. But I would seriously advise you to take them to auction because I think at auction you're going to meet people who are serious collectors of autographs and these are both very, very interesting. So, best of luck at the auction Thank you house. so much. Thank you. Without further ado, we join David and Richard in the sale room. Why part with them now? Um, I feel it's time to sell them. Um, OK. Cash them in, see, yeah. what, see if they're worth. You came on the show and you sat down with Debbie, one of our dealers. She offered you £100. Not a bad price. Seeing it came out of the skip and didn't cost anything, did you, were you tempted? No. No. You think they're worth more? Yeah. I think I do. When you look at some of the names in there, you know, they think they've probably got to be worth close to the, the £100 on their own. And there's lots of other names in there. Let's see what happens. They're coming up now. Here they are. The two autograph books um, with autographs from the 30s and 40s to include Gracie Fields. Gracie Fields, Rochdale. Gracie Fields. Wish me luck. <laughs> she could sing. I can't, obviously. £100 I'm bid for it. 110 anywhere. 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160, 170, 180, 190, 200. You were right. £220 I'm bid in the room. Are you all done at 220 The gamble has gone down at £220. Take away £22. That leaves you with £198. Now, Richard, what's your first reaction? It's the real deal on the day, yeah. It's the real deal, <laughs> cracked it, and, and also, as Gracie would say, it cost nowt. And now you've got £198. Quid. Good deal? Great deal. Real deal. It's great to finish on a high in the auction house. Now all we want to know is how our dealers did with today's buys. Brenda you, sold Brenda. the pickled fork to an American couple for £68. Debbie is still stuck with Toby. But Simon had an interesting time. He just made his money back on the silver compact. He managed a healthy profit for the sovereign pendant, selling it for £290 and finally proved he's still got the gift of the gab when he sold the slate clock to an American for £50 after convincing him it would fit in his suitcase. We've had a great day. There's been lots of wheeling and dealing, lots of buying, just the way we like it. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. Bye for now.